The human wandered through the shanty town that had sprung up around the edge of the spaceport, heading for the only decent watering hole he'd found in his 14 days here. This place was a rundown backwater in the dusty asshole of nowhere, a prefab town that had been built to support the spaceport. You could tell from the way all the buildings had the same style, the same level of wear from the sandstorms that kicked around now the weather control had been switched off. They'd had a few years of boom when they'd found helium free in the great desert, coupled with the low gravity and arid conditions it had been a gold rush for scouts and prospectors, as the big mining conglomerates moved in. Eventually, the whole planet was bought out, strip mined, and then the company moved on, leaving a shell of a world he couldn't even be bothered to remember. It's Serrano del Chucu, which roughly means hollow and empty. The chunk of computer etched onto the back of his skull was plugged into his short-term memory, allowing him to pull facts from the database and planetary network. It was meant to free cognition for faster and more complex reactions, but you could also use it to remember all the boring details of your life that you couldn't be bothered to, even though it was a waste of his potential and may lead to lasting psychological damage. Yeah, yeah, thanks, headcase. I'm on a mission to kill my remaining biological brain cells with alcohol. Cutting down a narrow alley between two storage silos, he reflexively checked his survival suit. Part environment suit, part body armor. It had helped in a brawl, but mostly he'd trust his sidearm and being the only human in the system. Most of the population was slow as slow metabolism organosilicates with no predatory instincts or hand-eye coordination. Hell, last time he got in a fist fight, he spat in the slug's eye and actually blinded it, as water was corrosive to silicates. Ducking under a low arch, he found the tunnel to the dive bar he'd found. The patrons were mostly a nervous, bad fungus species, so the lights were low, but they at least operated on carbon and water, and used alcohol recreationally. He put on his low-light visor and checked his nose tube. Oxygen levels were low, and the place always smelled like a piece of rear for some reason, as the bad guys sweat thallium vapour. He sat down at the bar and motioned the giant mushroom bartender for two bottles of the local beer analogue. The place was definitely quiet. All the regulars were here, but everyone was sitting stock still. When the barstool came back, he said, Weird night tonight. What's up? The barman puts a large, ornately decorated metal flagon down in front of him, and not to the back of the bar. Compliments of the reason everyone's hair trigger wired to run screaming, but no one dared get up as they were ordered to act natural and carry on as if they weren't there. He looks at the flagon, filled with three pints of what smells like neat spirits or metal polish, then turns slowly and looks where the barstool pointed. There was a dead space in his perceptions at the back of the bar. It's not empty. Something was actively cancelling his senses, even his vision. Worrying. Picking up the flagon with both hands, he heads towards the empty darkness trying his best devil-may-care human swagger. The empty space shifts and takes on shapes as he gets closer. People sitting around the back table. Big people. There's a furnace smell of sulfur, and it gets warmer suddenly. The shapes are large. Danger, humanoid. Danger, reptilian. Danger, danger. Listen to me, danger. Draconian holy mercenaries. Holy expletive. Even without their power suits, they rated as big a threat as a main battle tank or an orbital strike craft. Just one could level this town and call everyone in it in seconds, without having to engage a calling system. There were five of them! Holy expletive again! Five massive death lizards! There are two empty spaces at the table. Two empty flagons on the table. One extends a claw and pulls up a smaller chair. Make it eight around the table. Instinctively, he tries to send a warning message to the tactical net, let his crewmates know. The message failed to send, just hanging silently. Carrier not found. Looks like they control the local data sphere. You're on your own. Oh well. If they wanted, he would be dead anyway. They had the range and firepower to do it from orbit. So he smiles and takes the seat. He can almost feel the data link buzzing between them. They're linked so tightly, they are basically one being in five bodies. The closest speaks. A bass rumble, but perfectly understandable. We had there were humans here. The others join in, speaking in turn. We came to see. We came to talk. He shrugs. Polite death machines. Great. Well, thanks for the drink. Very kind of you. First time eating the human? We do have a bit of a reputation. First time... socially. Ah. There is a moment's expectant silence. The other times? Less socially. You humans are an unusual species. When outnumbered and outgunned, some species break and beg. Some panic and run. But some of you humans fight on with grim determination far outweighing your ability. He takes a nervous sip of the flagon, filling the spirits burn. Do they want to fight? 
You know the water was the hub? The human nods, his tongue rapidly going numb. We fought there. A full spear was employed three times the Sacred Seven. The planet was honored to have so many deployed. We were tasked to wipe out three cities, one metropolis each. In the last we found it was taking our tactical data. Our center for juvenile education had been tagged as a military command center. We reported it back but were told to carry on, wipe it out and move on to the next target. That was where we met the humans. And the largest and most decorated leans forward, raising a clawed hand. I asked their commander as they lay dying why they fought so hard. To cover the retreat, it said. As there are rules to war, and they would not let us break them. To buy time for the juveniles to get to safety. And so you remember our name, it said. So you fear us. The great reptile points to the jagged metallic scales across the side of his face. The neatly repaired scar tissue around the augmented artificial eye. It bears row after row of serrated teeth, showing three are diamond ceramic. With a shudder, the human realizes it's grinning. Grinning? Then his mate hit the side of my helm with a surface to space anti ship missile, cost me my eye and several teeth. We lost two that hour, the most lost in the whole planetary campaign. It was glorious. For us, battle is the holiest of sacraments. To have a little pink primate claim there are rules was insanity. Heresy. But then we absorbed the humans' computers, metabolized their brains, read their books. We realized the humans' rules do not seek to stifle war, but to honor it and those who take part. They were good rules, mostly. Sensible. Honorable. We adopted some, shared them with the faithful. It was agreed that humanity are indeed touched by the divine. The leader puts a small universal data chip on the table. To express our gratitude, and as it is the right thing to do. This is the insignia code of the officer who confirmed the target. The leader takes a long drink from his flagon, then fixes the human with a stare. You have rules of war. Enforce them. <laughs>